Everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Beth Hovenrado with Footnotes and Friends, and we're here to play you the music of Johann Arndt Mosted. Um, Johann was a fiddler who kept notebooks. We, our mu his music comes in eight handwritten uh, tune books that were passed down for over a century. Um, he immigrated to Northeast Iowa in 1869. He went back the next year and he brought his family with him. Um, so he was a well-known fiddler in Norway, and here he was a farmer with a fiddler out in the country. And uh, we're hopefully going to share a little of his passion and his journey with you now. Uh, my connection to these tune books goes back over 25 years. I was researching music traditions for the Smithsonian Institutes. Um, it was a project, the Folk Life in Iowa project in 1998. And I met Ellen Blagan, who was uh, an accompanist for her father, who played the fiddle. And she shared tunes with me, and we became good friends. Um, so we were having a conversation with an elderly man. And they started talking about a man named Johann Arndt, who had been a mentor to both Ellen's father and to this man's uncle. And they were talking about the uh, Arndt waltzes and how Johann Arndt kept this music in a beautiful hand. And I was really interested because they were talking about something that was written down. And Ellen, uh, she got on the phone. She called Canada. She called California. She called everywhere. And she found the music in Minnesota under the bed of one of the great granddaughters. I'm saying under the bed. And that was Diane Clark Perditis, who you just heard play the piano. Um, so Diane shared her uh, copies of the tune book with us, and this was back in the 1990s. And for the most part, um, those tunes sat in my basement, and it was because they were difficult to decipher. There was not standard notation. Um, there wasn't rests and sharps and flats on all of them. On some, things were missing, and it was hard to read. So um, in 2018, the American Scandinavian Foundation awarded a grant that was written by Bill Musser um, to my, uh, of my band Footnotes to transcribe these 787 tunes and tune fragments that are in the tune books to have them transcribed to stand standard notation. So Otter Dreaming of Decora did that painstaking work. And um, <clears throat> although he can't be here today, I really want to thank him for doing that and his attention to detail. But Bill Musser is here, though, and I want to thank him for being an early collaborator on this project. Do you want to stand up, Bill? <laughs> um, so Footnotes is a Norwegian-American old-time dance band from Decorah, Iowa, that many of you are familiar with. Um, we played for dances at the Highlandville Schoolhouse and for Nordic Fest in Decorah and for hundreds of community celebrations. Um, and in 1998, we made a recording called My Father Was a Fiddler, and that featured tunes that we learned from the daughters and granddaughters of some of our area's early fiddlers. Um, and as, those, as that recording circulated, people sent us information about fiddlers and their family or musicians or events with music, and several people sent us um, handwritten tune books. And one of those was meticulously researched by Amy Shaw, who you just heard perform Southern Home Shottish. Uh, Amy's book, Ole Hendricks and His Tune Book, was published by the University of Wisconsin Press in 2020. And a companion CD called Play It Again, Ole, by the new Ole Hendricks Orchestra was also coordinated by Amy. And that's available, the information on this, the CDs and the book is available on our CD table over there. Um, and through the Vesterheim Museum store as well. So I'd like to introduce Amy Shaw. She's from St. Paul, Minnesota. She's also an archivist at St. Catharines. And 
Welcome, Amy. Thank you for being part of our ensemble. I'm going to save uh, some other introductions, and, and we're going to go right to playing a tune that's marked cotillion, spelled K-O-T-T-I-L-J-E-N, which is a cotillion, C-O-T-I-L-L-I-O-N, which I'm told is a type of dance that is uh, maybe a forerunner to the quadrille and similar to a, a square dance. They're no longer danced or played in this area, um, but they must have been popular in Johann's time because uh, there's many tunes that are labeled as cotillion. And one of the tune books, over half of them were called cotillions. So I can't remember a tune unless it has a name. So I've named this one the Canoe Creek Cotillion because that's near where Johan lived here in Iowa. So. Let's try it. <laughs> oh, and the tune that you just heard was written by John Gooden, who was the mandolin player of footnotes. And between John and myself, we've written the, uh, the harmonies for the music in this concert. 
This concert is dedicated to the memory of John Gooden, who succumbed to cancer 10 days ago. He was a kind and wonderful person, upbeat and brave, a prolific composer and arranger, brilliant and charming performer, and cherished friend and bandmate. We are so grateful for all the work that he did on this project and for the, all he gave to the world. <clears throat> Let me introduce next our fiddler. This is Ann Stryford of Winnishie County, Iowa. Um, she is a dear friend and fiddle partner for many years. And um, when I think of playing the fiddle, it's actually playing when I play with Ann. We've been a duo for a long time. Ann does, is a speech therapist as well. <clears throat> and thank you for being here, Ann. Um, <laughs> Our guitarist is John Roddell, um, and I'd like to. That's my old roommate. I'd like to, to thank him for making, uh, figuring out the chords for most of these tunes. The tunes just are melodies in the tune book, so he figured out a lot of the chords for these. John's my husband and best friend, and he uh, is retired but operates Nut Job Earring Company. I see quite a few are you wearing your Nut Job Earring Company things, um, and. So thanks, John. Oh. Uh, Rob Hervey is our bass player in this concert. He's uh, stepping in for footnotes bassist Bill Musser. Um, he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's going to be also playing guitar and mandolin. And are you playing fiddle? I don't think so. OK. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's also, he's also a, a great carpenter. And we really thank you to have Thank you. Glad to have you here. <clears throat> OK, we're going to play another cotillion. This one we call Burnt Top Cotillion, um, because Johan is said to have play, well, he played while smoking sometimes. And with the cigarette sticking out, you can see burn marks. If you look on your program, you can see the little marks on the left-hand side where the fiddle was burned. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's Where all I was going to say. That fiddle is with a, a relative out in California. Currently there, yeah. As far as we know. <clears throat> Burnt up cotillion. <clears throat> I want to and two.
Okay, we're going to play now uh, a medley called uh, the Jeg Set. There's two tunes that are found under the name Jeg. One is J-E-G-H, and the other is J-E-G, which you would think would be jigs, but neither of them are in 6-8 or any kind of form like a usual jig. Um, so we don't really know what people might have used this tune for. <laughs> they probably, maybe they are something that the Irish neighbors liked. Anyway, the, um, the first tune was just a, a tune fragment, and John Gooden composed the second part of that tune. So we'll play the jack chat. Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay, Satry, Iowa isn't much more than an intersection, intersection nowadays. Um, but at one time, it had a store, a dance hall, and a blacksmith shop. And Johan and his wife and his family lived on a small farm very near to Satry, Iowa, on a little side hill. Um, and so we've named this the Satry Shadish. And apparently the dance hall, the stage was very high up. The, the 
dancer, the musicians kind of loomed over the dancers way down below. So that seems kind of interesting. <laughs> that Johan wrote to his daughter Thea, Johan says, and this is translated from the Norwegian, I received your most recent letter on Saturday evening, just as I was leaving to play at the platformen. That refers to an outdoor dance floor or a platform. And this letter was written the same year that Johan died in 1909, so it shows that he was an active fiddler into his 70s. And John Gooden wrote the part for this.
Let's see. So Johan came from the Frosta area of Trondelag, Norway, and his name is recorded in various documents and papers in a number of different ways. And I got a lot of this information from another great granddaughter, who is uh, Lois, is right over here, um, sister to Diane. And uh, some of the ways his name was, has been noted is Johan Arndt, Johan Arn, Anderson, Tuturoa, Tautra, also Moxness, Mosted, Frosted, and Froista. Probably all variations of names of the various farms where he lived. Um, unless you were the oldest son, you wouldn't inherit a family farm, so he probably moved and worked to different places, and that might explain all of the names. Um, he was part of the Mosted family of well-known Norwegian musicians. The genealogy book Folketmit, published in 1951, says no less musical are the Mosteds from Frosta. One of the most well-known is Alf Mosted, who was the director of music at Trondheim. He was the nephew of Johan Arndt Freusted, who he took after. And this is our Johan. In that case, his name was Freusted, Freusted in that book. Um, <clears throat> the name Mosted is often referred to. Um, and I just found out today, I thought his gravestone just said Johan Arndt, and that's what we always just have been calling him. But uh, Lois told me this says Mosted across the top. I didn't know that. So Johan Arndt Mosted. Um, so I'm super excited about this story to tell you now for the next tune. Uh, was a waltz I liked from the tune book. Um, and just, I picked it because I liked it. I didn't have anything particular to say about it. And then I was playing some tunes for Vidar Skreda, who is a fiddler from Norway who lives in Milwaukee right now. And when I played him uh, what, this tune, he said, oh, that's still played in Norway. And it's associated with a fiddler that went by the name, or that was called Font Karl. Um, and I was lucky to find information on the internet then about Font Karl f that was written um, by Mary Bartholomew, who is in Norway. She's part of the group Dalla Copa. And she wrote her dissertation, I think, or a book on this Font Karl, who was a traveling professional musician and a celebrity who brought the waltz to the rural areas of Norway um, when it was all the rage in Europe, which was the first half of the 1800s. He, that's, about that time, I think. She said this was the type of fancy high society waltz uh, that escaped from the ballrooms and went out into the countryside. So the other, the other cool thing that is just happening right now is that Mary put me in touch with a musician from Frosta um, who seems to be as excited as I am about our meeting. Um, she is part of a fiddler's group um, and they were looking for tunes back in the 90s from their area and they contacted um, someone who, who was in charge of the sheet music of, the, of a Mosted, a Johan Arndt Mosted in Norway, a different Johan Arndt Mosted, actually the nephew of our Johan Arndt Mosted. Um, so we're gonna share, share tunes and information. And just this morning, well, she, she, wrote, she wrote, we just connected this week, and she wrote and she said, oh, I'm so excited, but I have to concentrate. I'm doing a, a concert this weekend. I went, ooh, I'm also supposed to concentrate on my <laughs> concert coming up this weekend. So that was really cool. So anyway, I opened the computer this morning, and she had sent a video of her son playing at a dance just last night in Trondheim, playing one of the um, most dead tunes. Um, not one that I know of from the tune book, another one. So we're going to have tons of fun with sharing that. So. Um, let's see, is that all I was going to say on that one? There's so much written down here. I think so. So the three of us are going to play that one.
next tune was found in Johann's book under the name Two Step, T U S T I P. Two Step. I think it was a two step. He, <laughs> oops, sorry, that's okay. Um, he probably didn't write in English very much, um, and a lot of his spellings are really delightful. He had his phonics down. He had his phonics, yeah. Yeah, so I was also going to mention that the tunes have been passed down through the years, so some of the tunes may have been added by other family members. Some seem to be written in a different script. Uh, for example, Johann's grandson, Harry Brandt's name, and some drawings appear in one of the books. And Harry was raised by Johann Arndt and his wife, Trina, after Harry's mother died and his father was absent. And I learned from Harry's daughter that as a boy, Harry didn't have his own fiddle, so he would, uh, but he was a good player, so he would borrow his grandpa's when he was asked to play. But then if he made any tips, he had to give all the money to grandpa <laughs> for rent. And also, she told me that when there was a fight, which apparently was often, he was super careful to put it in the case and away from the action. Yeah. So this is uh, the two-step. if you're playing in the next tune. Um, one of our goals of this uh, project was to share some of these lost tunes with others. So to that end, we attended the Scandinavian Music Jam at Vesterheim Museum and shared two of Johann's tunes with the participants of this group. And they're here to join us in playing now. Uh, the first we named Journey to Spillville, and the title came from an intriguing tidbit from a family member who claimed that the composer Antonin Dvorak, who was living in Spillville in the summer of 1893, had called on Johann to come play a part of a run-through of one of his compositions. Although Johann is not mentioned in the accounts of the first reading of the famous American Quartet, Dvorak did compose another chamber work in Spillville, which was a string quintet in E-flat, and we haven't found out who played in that, so perhaps Johann was the fifth in that ensemble. Okay, so. Uh, um, are you guys ready?
intermission after the next tune, but I want to take just a minute to thank these musicians and introduce you briefly. This is Lindsay Scott. She's brand new in Decorah. She uh, moved here to work at the Seed Savers, and she discovered uh, Vesterheim Music Jam during Nordfest. Tyler Hendrickson has uh, been also coming up from Iowa City area to play at the jam, and um, I was fortunate to meet him. There was a chance that we were going to uh, need a substitute at the last minute for, for Anne, actually, um, but she's here. Tyler was an understud understudy, and just this last week, he learned all his music and was ready to step in. <laughs> and, uh, and this is uh, Jeanette Dragfold, and she comes down from Lanesboro area, and she's always got an exciting instrument, so she's got her heart on her fiddle. Yeah. Wonderful, and let's see. Um, Kaylin Jolstead is a student um, up at Luther. I met her last year in Tony Guzman's, when she was taking Tony Guzman's uh, World, Cult, World Music Cultures class. Um, and she's in the orchestra up at Luther. And I'm glad she's here. And Bill Deutsch, he's been a participant in the Westerheim Jam and uh, is uh, he leads um, dances at the Contra Dances. He's involved in different kinds of music projects here. So thank you all very much for playing. There we go. I had to have one more hand. <laughs> thank you, Beth. You always uh -huh. save me. <laughs> okay, this is the galopade and we'll take a little break.
bring the group back up for a tune that I've named the Neighborhood Cotillion, uh, because music making brought neighbors together, <clears throat> and this was especially important in rural areas. Kitchen tables were moved out for kitchen dances, old houses were left standing for dances, uh, barns were used seasonally, uh, platforms were built. So as our friend Bill Muster says, um, he likes to say that when people move together, they, uh, that forms a tighter bond. So um, the tunes in Johan's collection were certainly not all of Norwegian origin. They're a synthesis of music from Scandinavia, but probably all also Irish, Scottish, British tunes, compositions by Johan himself and other musicians he knew. Some are ballroom and popular tunes and maybe a little circus influence. Some tunes were hits such as The Man on the Flying Trapeze, Home Sweet Home, A Hot Time on the Old Town. Some are patriotic marches like Battle Hymn of the Republic. Some are classical like Ole Bull's Seder Jentens Sondag. Some are religious songs or hymns or carols like Silent Night. There's a tune by the interpreter of mariachi culture and founder of the mandolin orchestra craze, Carlo Curti, called La Tepica, and the Mexican waltz, I See Thee Again by Manuel Estrada. There's minstrel songs by Stephen Foster like Swanee River. There's also familiar sounding and standard fiddle tunes like Irish Washerwoman, Wake Up Susan, Sailor's Hornpipe, Devil's Dream, Soldier's Joy, and Arkansas Traveler. We had to dig a little to identify many of these tunes as Johan didn't always have them titled. So this is Neighborhood Cotillion. Brandt was Johann Arndt's son-in-law. He was a good fiddler who often worked away cooking in the logging camps in northern Minnesota. His son, Harry Brandt, joined Jake up north by the time he was 17. 
Harry was a good fiddler too and uh, had lived earlier with his, his grandpa, Johann Arndt. And there's a good chance that some of the tunes in Johann's tune book were brought to Iowa from Jake and Harry, who learned them from Hitler, fiddlers that could have come from anywhere. This is Jake's Schadisch. <clears throat> Continue with the tune that uh, I've named Spellmann's Jeg. It's another J E G H. Um, Spellmann means musician or fiddler. Um, the first half of this tune was included in Johann's tune book as a tune fragment. So we don't know much about these fragments. Perhaps it was a tune that was so familiar he didn't write the whole thing out. I'm guess, you know, guessing these things. Or maybe it was something, a composition he had in the works. Or maybe something he heard from someone else play. He could only remember part of it. Um, in this case, John Gooden completed this tune fragment uh, with a second part. It was something that appealed to him. And Anne was practicing it slowly at home, and she noticed how pretty it sounded played slowly. So we'll have her start the piece slow, and then we'll pick it up and go from there.
Uh, there was one of the tune fragments that appeared in five different separate tune books, either parts of it or a variation of it. So that seems like it should be a must for this concert. Um, it was marked Vaults Number 7. Um, and I believe that there were a series of waltzes that were composed by Johann Arndt that he numbered. And I think that's what um, Ellen Blagan and her friend were talking about, the Arndt waltzes. Um, and I, so I think this is one of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy one. It's in B-flat. <laughs> Why we saved it till it's close to the end, I don't know. So. <laughs> I mean, other things have been in B-flat, but this one is kind of a hard one. We tried to get it. Why don't you take a solo on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Arndt Clark, Johann's daughter, was a talented musician and his youngest child. She was a left-handed fiddler who played for dances by the time she was seven. Thea was also the first organist at Big Canoe Lutheran Church in 1890 when a reed organ was procured. Johann is said to have pumped the organ while Thea played the keyboard. 
I named this tune Bad Oats Cotillion for a letter that I was privileged to read from Johann Arndt to his daughter Thea, and I'll read all but three lines of the translation here. Satry, Iowa, November 1907. I'm going to write a few lines to you, my dear Thea, to let you know that we're all fine and wondering how you and your family are after your illness. We're expecting a visit from you any day now, so you'll really have to come first chance you can get. I had a poor oats harvest this year, not even worth threshing. Make sure you can stay for a while when you come to visit. Hope we hear from you soon, Thea. Fond greetings to all of you, your father, John Arndt. P.S. What does your husband say about us not paying the money we owe him? <laughs> so it was not all fun and dancing, but I believe that Johann's music has made a lasting impression on his community and on me. Having lived over 100 years ago, leaving a country where he was uh, known and appreciated for, for the unknown of a new land, coming with very little and raising a big family on a steep and rocky little farm. He brought life, energy, and culture to his new neighbors, bringing them together to share experience and dance. And he left his musical notes for his children and their descendants and now for us to revive and contemplate. These old tunes possess special vitality and clues to the past. We're trying to preserve Johann's work and passion, but we're also trying to add something new to the old. I savor the opportunity to play with this group of friends and fine musicians, and I'm glad that we could uh, share this experience with you. And before the last tune, I'd really like to thank Isaiah Solheim and Jacob Idstrom for helping us with the videotape of this concert. Um, it will be available, yeah, it'll be available online after they edit it. <laughs> And I'd also like to uh, thank Vesterheim for their support and the Lingenbury event venue here. And thanks for funding and support from the American Scandinavian Foundation. So from all of us, thank you for listening. We got one more tune, Bad Oats Cotillion. <laughs> oh, I'm